This video outlines some key principles and best practices that are essential parts of quality installations, specifically module placement and equipment specifications at the array. When they're done right, solar installations are so beautiful. They're a representation of progress and our ability to change and make smart decisions toward a sustainable future. A well-placed, well-installed array is aesthetically pleasing and will be mechanically reliable for many years to come. Quality workmanship will ensure that warranties and investments in the product and the industry will be maintained. In many ways, success of the solar industry starts right here at the array, where visual observation leads to happy customers and inquisitive neighbors. There's a lot that goes into maintaining the warranty and the life of the system, and it starts here at the module level of the installation. Installation manuals are easily located online with a quick Google search. You can type in the manufacturer, followed by the wattage, followed by the words installation manual to locate this information if it wasn't supplied to you with the modules. The installation guide provides detailed instructions on things like using correct hardware that's corrosion resistant, leaving an adequate distance of three inches or more for array ventilation, torquing specifications for attachments, mounting clamp placement and installation, the even placement and orientation of modules upon rails, the effects of wind load on installation method, and even the importance of observing other codes and standards. There are specific guidelines for each piece of equipment, so be sure to become familiar with the manuals for the specific product you're working with. Now let's take a look at some photos and talk about how this plays out. Here are a few attachments that have been installed incorrectly. Full contact isn't made between the clamp and the module and it's not secure. Installation manuals, of course, do outline specifically how much contact needs to be made here, but common sense tells us that this isn't right. This could be the case of attachments that were partially tightened down and then shifted during the install and then weren't corrected. Module clamps must be secured appropriately to the manufacturer's specified torque rating for tightening. It's a good practice to go back and check all attachments and make sure that things have not shifted and that none have been missed. It's also important to make sure that the right length of clamps are used. If a clamp isn't the right length for the job, it won't guarantee a secure attachment. Racking equipment is engineered to manage wind, seismic, and vibration loads, but if it isn't installed appropriately, then all bets are off and the warranty can be voided. I'm not sure how this happened, but it looks like the clamp was possibly too short and seemed to be secured when it really wasn't. Then, when the inspector took a look at it to check if it was secure, it just came right off. Best practices and following the installation manual will be using a torque wrench to make sure that the clamp is tightened effectively so that it doesn't slide off at the module or come loose entirely. The torquing guidelines again are specified with the product installation manual and they vary for each type of racking and module. Rails shouldn't be cut too short either. The industry standard is to leave one and a half inches at the end to allow for expansion or live load disturbances. If the array were to shift from a very slight disturbance, the end module could come loose and the entire array stability would be compromised. Here's a great example of well installed module attachments. Full contact is made between the attachment and the module. About an inch and a half of the rail is left at the end to allow for expansion and live load disturbances. And the right length of clamp is used so that they're at a perfect right angle and it's torqued appropriately so that it's nice and secure. Another common issue is modules that are installed right up against each other. Some would argue that it isn't really an issue unless you're on large scale systems and technically that may even be true, but module installation guides do state that you must allow for space between modules to mitigate thermal expansion in order to maintain the warranty. Spaces required are given in the installation manual and they vary with an average of about one centimeter being the standard. Modules need to be installed evenly upon the rails as well. Here you can see that the distance from the top attachment to the top of the module is almost three times the distance from the lower part of the module to the lower rail. 
This would easily violate the module warranty and it would be potentially insecure. A ray should be installed to leave breathing distance between the module and the roof. The standard recommended distance is 3 to 6 inches and less than 3 is not recommended because high heat will reduce the performance of the array. Now let's take a look at a few really beautiful examples of arrays that employ these practices. This array is adequately ventilated. The modules are evenly spaced upon the rails and everything looks level, secure, and even. Also notice that the array does not extend all the way to the edge of the roof. It's not best practice to install an array all the way to the edge of the roof for multiple reasons. There's likely less support here architecturally, there are higher wind loads at the edge of the roof, and roof access should be left for firefighters. 2014 National Electric Code will implement the International Fire Code regulation on requiring roof access for firefighters. Stay informed on what your local AHJ is enforcing and consider providing the required distances around your arrays to accommodate this new guideline. Lastly, these modules are oriented in the correct direction upon the rail. It may seem strange, but some modules cannot be clamped on the short edge. We can't assume at some point in the load testing of the module it failed when clamped in this way, and so the insulation manual will state that the module cannot be secured in this manner. A well-installed PV system will follow manufacturing guidelines and industry best practices, and a visual inspection of the array will provide immediate clues to the quality of the workmanship. The clamps will be correctly spaced and secured, the rows will be level and not right up against each other, the right hardware will be used. Room will be left under the modules for ventilation and around the modules for firefighter access. Modules will be oriented as the manufacturer specifies in the installation manual and with proper spacing and equipment as outlined by the manufacturer. Remember, every little piece of the puzzle matters and it's our responsibility to make sure equipment is installed as it's engineered to be. When in doubt, you can always find manufacturers provided installation manuals online that will assist you in being a leader in your field through following these best practices.